what that music say? Yes, sir, Amos. That music say, good health to all from Rexall. The Amos and Andy Show, transcribed with Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Sarah Berner, Shirley Mitchell, Jeff Alexander's music, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Amos, but as myself, my real name is Freeman Gosden. And this is Andy, but uh, my real name is Charlie Carell. Tonight is the last broadcast of the present season, and we are very, very happy, ladies and gentlemen, to tell you that we will be back again next year at the same time for Rexall products. We are very proud of the name Rexall and what it stands for, and that's why my partner talks to you so sincerely each Sunday before the broadcast, telling you of the trust you can put in any product that bears the name Rexall. After the show tonight, we will come back and tell you goodbye until next season. But just one thought now. Even though we will not be on the air during the summer months, we would still greatly appreciate it if you would visit your friendly Rexall druggist during our absence. You know, sometimes it's hard to understand how an argument between a husband and wife can start over nothing. Of course, when the married couple is George Stevens and his wife Sapphire, well, then it's not too hard to understand. Well, first, let's take the other morning at breakfast. Sapphire didn't know it, but the first act of aggression was when she put the poached eggs in front of George. Holy smokes, look at the way you done broke those two eggs. The yolks is running all over the white. It's like staring into the eyes of a hippopotamus with a hangover. (laughs) George, there ain't nothing wrong with them eggs. They is fresh laid. Yeah, well, if you ask me, them chickens was glad to get rid of them. <laughs> and look at this coffee. And what's wrong with the coffee? What's wrong with it? I feed hogs waller and butter stuffed in that. <laughs> now, George, I... And, and look at them stringy marmalade there. That stringy marmalade. I don't know whether to eat it or step on it. I don't know. <laughs> George Stevens, maybe you would have been better off if you'd have married somebody else. Well, maybe I would have been better off. <laughs> After all, we ain't had no perfect life together. Don't you talk that way about our marriage. When you was courting me, you told me you was looking for a sweet little gal who would love you for the rest of your life. Mm, that's right. The only trouble was, after we got married, you made me stop looking, I... <laughs> George Stevens, maybe you'd be better off married to somebody else. Yeah, well, like I say, maybe I would be better off. Ah, uh, who would have married you? Well, Florence Baxter, for one. Florence Baxter? The bridesmaid at our wedding? Mm, yep. You always did have a crush on her, didn't you? Well, I guess it did. Uh, Florence Baxter, my old flame. Hmm. <laughs> George Stevens, what is you thinking about? Honey, if I told you, you'd hit me over the head with that toaster right there. <laughs> now, look here, George Stevens. Every time we have an argument, you is always comparing me unfavorable with that Florence Baxter. I tell you once and for all, I'm fed up with hearing about Florence Baxter. Oh, you is, huh? Well, now, let me tell you something. No, I'll tell you something. I'm tired of you complaining about me. After all, I'm the one that's kept this family together. I have supported you for 22 years. But Sapphire... You ain't nothing but a no-good, lazy loafer. I wish you was married to Florence Baxter. Now, I'm going to the bedroom, and you can get your own breakfast. You hear that, you big bum? <laughs> For a minute there, I thought she was going to lose her temper. I... Yes, Henry, I'm certainly glad that you dropped over to the lodge here. It's been nice talking to you. Good to talk to you and get the stuff off my chest. Well, Kingfish, I has had my trouble with Mrs. Van Porter at times, too. But listen, about this Florence Baxter, I am surprised that the old flame hasn't gone out years ago. Well, I thought the embers had died, too, Henry, but somewhere deep down inside of me, there must be a hot clinker. (laughs) You know, Henry, I guess I do love Sapphire, but 
Well, I just can't help thinking I might have been better off marrying Florence Baxter. That's what I think. Well, if she was such a prize, why in the world did you ever marry Sapphire? Well, it was just one of them strange jerks of fate, Henry. <laughs> it all started 22 years ago back in Marietta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Me and Andy was working in the cotton mill and rooming together. I remember one night, uh, well, he had lined up a couple of gals, and we was driving over to pick them up in my old Rickenbacker 6, you see. <laughs> I had my ukulele with me. Oh, I can see the whole thing now. Oh, if you like a ukulele lady, ukulele lady like a you. Oh, root toot toot toot. Our razzmatazz. Oh, do 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 do. And uh, you know what? Our voices are marginalized good, you don't you, boy? <laughs> oh yeah. You know something? We is almost good enough to go on the radio with Major Bowlegs. <laughs> hey, hey, we better step on it. We're meeting the gals at seven. Yeah. Say, the car looks nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I got it all slicked up for the day tonight. I... Watch the thing, chase the chickens out the back seat and all that stuff. Yeah, well, I'm glad you've done that. The last time I took a gal out in this thing, I slid over the neck with her and sat on an egg. Uh, by the way, Andy, uh, who is the gal you got for us tonight, kid? Oh, I made a date with a couple of real flappers. Mm-hmm. Florence Baxter and Sapphire Smith. Hmm, I see Florence Baxter, but I don't think I know that Sapphire gal. Oh, yeah, you must know Sapphire. You remember them four debutantes we seen walking down the street the other day? Uh, yeah. Well, Sapphire was the one wearing the horse blanket stole. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, after thinking it over, Andy, I'm going to do you a favor and take the other gal tonight that you can have Sapphire. Oh, no, nothing doing, Georgie boy. I still want that Florence Baxter. She is the best-looking gal at the plant, and boy, do she have a figure. Mm. Oh, I agree with you there. You know, down at the plant, the foreman say he's going to transfer her to the office. She's slowing down production too much working in the mill. <laughs> oh, she is, huh? Oh, yeah. The other day when she walked down the aisle to get a drink of water, four fellas got mangled in the cotton baler. <laughs> well, now, look, Andy, uh, you uh, just got to switch dates with me tonight, boy. I- I'll take Sapphire the next time, kiddo. Yeah, well... Okay, but just this once. Yeah, say, and uh, I figured that uh, we'd take the gals to that dime uh, dance hall tonight. Uh, how much money you got on your lounge, Lizard? Well, let me see here. Counting my emergency fund, I got 35 cents. <laughs> well, I guess that's enough to see us through the evening. Yeah, I sure hope the gals bring some money. I'd hate for me and you to have to spend another Saturday night dancing with each other. <laughs> hey. We better hurry up here. I'll step on the gas. It's ten minutes to seven. Well, so, Kingfish, you met Florence Baxter and Sapphire on a double date, huh? But listen, if Florence was your gal, how'd you happen to pre-post the Sapphire? Well, I didn't exactly propose to her, Henry. The thing kind of snuck up on me. You see, one night when Florence was away, Sapphire invited me over for a little Sunday evening social at a folks' house. Yeah. Well, I thought I was safe with a lot of friends and relatives. Her Aunt Matilda was at the organ, a couple of brothers, the local preacher, and three, four cousins. Hmm, sounds like quite a party, all right. Oh, yeah, well, anyway, uh, we was playing parlor games, and all of a sudden, Sapphire's mama jumped up and says, Does anyone know the name of our first president? I says, I do. And with that, Matilda started pounding the organ, the preacher done whipped out his book, and next thing I knew, I was a dead duck there. <laughs> yes, well, uh... They really sprung a trap on you, didn't they? Yeah, it was a tough break, Henry. If it hadn't been for George Washington, I'd have been married to Florence Baxter. <laughs> well, I tell you, Henry, if you could uh, just, well, if you could just have your life to live over, the things you could do. Mm. Oh, I tell you, you know, uh, here, now, let me get the, uh, hello? Hello, this is Western Union. I have a message for George Stevens. Uh, well, this is George Stevens. Uh, go ahead, Western Union. It's from Marietta, Georgia. Yeah. Arriving in New York at 12.05 tomorrow. We'll call you from station. Looking forward to seeing you again. All my love. Signed, Florence Baxter. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. By Kingfish, you're quivering. How say I is? My dream girl is coming to New York. It was bad enough when she was 800 miles away in Georgia. But now she's going to be right here in New York. I tell you, Henry, that's like putting a pound of leader crants in front of a hungry rat, dog. Good evening. This 
is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Like Bismarex, for example, this famous antacid often neutralizes excess stomach acidity within one minute, eases gastric distress, leaves a soothing protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. Ask for Bismarex, B-I-S-M-A hyphen R-E-X, Bismarex, at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Four o'clock in the morning. I ain't slept a wink all night. Florence Baxter coming to town. My old flame. I love Sapphire, but... Oh, how is I going to react when Florence gets you? I can't help thinking what my life would have been like if I'd have married Florence. It would have been like a dream. Everything would have been different. Everything... I can see it now. Well, good morning, my bride. Good morning, my sweet. Oh, George, my love. These last five minutes away from you have been agony. Sit down to your breakfast, my love. Thank you, honey. Oh, what a beautiful pair of poached eggs. (laughs) You must have broken the chicken's heart to let go of them. And this coffee. The coffee is like Chanel number no. five from a dripulator. <laughs> oh, I just love doing things for you, Joe. Oh, thank you, Florence, darling. You are so considerate. You are so lovely and beautiful. Oh, George, you is the most wonderful, the most generous, and the most handsome man in the whole world. And you are so truthful, too. <laughs> George, darling, finish your eggs. I got a lovely T-bone for you in the oven. French fried potatoes, sweet rolls, and a honeydew melon. And uh, what is you going to have, my darling? Whatever you leave over, sugar. (laughs) You know, honey, you is the perfect wife. You don't nag at me for not working. You make your mama send us a fat check every week. (laughs) And another thing I like about you, you ain't jealous. Why, last night at the party when I was kissing and smooching with them other gals, you didn't say a word. Not George. When we go out, I like to see you enjoy yourself. Oh. <laughs> Come here, my love, and let me run my fingers through your long, wavy hair. <laughs> Why is you slapping me on the head like that? What is you up to? Nothing, honey. I was just dreaming. Listen, you bum. When you dreams around here, wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> oh, yes, and I uh, couldn't sleep. I got in here at the large hall at 6 o'clock this morning. Oh, that's terrible, Kingfish. You dreaming about Florence Baxter. Yeah, and you got no idea what I'm going through, Ender. I love my wife, but how is I going to react when I see Florence Baxter? After all, when you has been driving a Model T Ford for 20 years, it's dependable transportation, but they can't blame you for sighing a little when a Cadillac goes by. (laughs) Yeah, I understand your problem, Kingfish. I know a couple of years ago, I was madly in love with this one gal, and she was giving me presents, and I was up at her house smooching all the while. Uh Uh-huh. Then I fell in love with this other gal at the same time. And she started sending me presents. And I had to go up to her house and smooch all the time. Really torn between them, huh? Oh, yeah. Then they started fighting over me. One was trying to outdo the other. Oh, it was really something. I imagine it was, Ender. Yeah. Boy, I wish I could get in another mess like that. (laughs) But, Ender, I'm going to tell you something, boy. I got a problem here. Now, how is I going to react when I sees this Florence? Florence, my dream girl. 
Well, now, wait a minute, Kingfish. You love Sapphire, don't you? Yeah, I know as I does, but I've been married a long time, and no one things has changed. When I first married Sapphire, she used to come to the breakfast table in a beautiful negligee with her hair tied back and neat little ribbons. Hmm. Now she comes to the table in an old flannel bathrobe with her hair down over her face like a sheepdog. <laughs> she do, huh? Yeah, lucky she's getting bald or she wouldn't be able to see where she's going. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Andy, have I been facing South Five all these years? When I see his Florence, my dream girl, so beautiful and charming, I don't know how I'm going to act. Yeah, I see your point there, all right, Kingfish. The temptation might be too much for you. But what are you going to do? Well, I've been thinking, and uh, I can't take a chance on Fizz and Florence. She arriving at 12.05 uh, this afternoon, and when she calls from the station, I just ain't going to be here. You mean you're going to hide someplace? Yeah, I ain't going to be home. Yeah. No, Andy, but here's what I'm going to do. You see, Sapphire's been hollering about having the apartment decorated. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell her that I'm going to have it done, and we got to move to a hotel for a few days. Now, that way, when Florence calls from the station this noon, well, we won't be there. Yeah. I'm going home now and start Sapphire packing. i got to get out there by 12.05. In other words, Kingfish, you think that this is the best way to be happy for the rest of your life? Listen, and I was a married man. Happiness ain't got nothing to do with it. Now, <laughs> Come on, Sapphire, come on. Hurry up. It's after 12 o'clock. All right, George. I'm coming. I'm coming. But why does we have to rush like this? We could let the decoration go. Oh, come on now. Come on. We got the bags packed. Let's get out of here. Now, we got the reservation and... Uh, I didn't hear nothing. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> George, that's the phone. I'm going to answer it. Wait a minute. Oh, now, wait a minute now. Uh... Hello? Oh, Florence Baxter. Of course I remember you. Tell her we both died. <laughs> oh, why, don't be silly, Florence. Of course I do. <laughs> There's a knife in the back chuckle if ever I hear one. <laughs> fine, Florence, fine. Goodbye. George, guess who that was? I ain't got the slightest idea. <laughs> George, the decorating can wait. That was Florence Baxter. And some Aunt Mary of hers that she don't even remember sent her the money to take a vacation up here in New York. And I invited Florence up to supper. Now you can get a chance to see that old flame of yours you're always talking about. By the way, George, how is you going to act when you see her? Honey, I refuse to answer that on the ground that it might tend to degrade or incriminate me. I ain't going <laughs> Rexall family druggist. In a recent nationwide survey, American wives and mothers agreed that every medicine cabinet should contain a dependable, all-round antiseptic, one that could uh, serve as a mouthwash, gargle, breath deodorant, or antiseptic dressing, all with equal effectiveness. Are you implying there's one that good? You bet I am. Rexall MI-31. MI-31? Why is it called that? Well, ma'am, MI-31 is the designation for a special antiseptic formula that kills contacted germs almost instantly when used full strength. Yet it won't harm delicate membranes of the mouth and throat. Yes, tangy, amber-colored MI-31 sweetens your breath, leaves your mouth feeling clean and refreshed. And, incidentally, Rexall gives you a full pint at the same price as other leading antiseptics of smaller quantity. Say, I've got to remember that name. Rexall MI-31. Right. Ask for it at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Oh, me. I got to get in here and talk to my lawyer, Calhoun. This is the greatest emotional problem I've ever faced in my life. Calhoun, I got to see you right away. Well, if it ain't calamity, George. Uh, yeah, now, now, look, Calhoun, I, I got a terrible problem. An old gal of mine, Florence Baxter, that I was crazy about before I got married, and who I has been thinking about for the last 22 years is coming up here to my house for supper. Now, what is the first thing I ought to do? Well, that's simple. Just send your wife to the movies. <laughs> oh, no. I can't do that. Uh, what must I, I do, though, when, when the gal walks in? 
Well, now, first of all, you've got to be calm. Remember, your wife is watching your actions. Yeah, of course, when I see the gal, maybe I'll get a little excited, you know. Well, now, when you see her, try not to act like a bird dog and go on point and start quivering. <laughs> well, that's all I can do, Calhoun. Just go through with the thing like my heart ain't breaking and never show Florence how I really feel about her. Sure. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. You know, Calhoun, I'm glad I come here and talk to you because you know a lot about women. How come you never got married, Calhoun? <laughs> well, now, Kingfish, that's a sad, sad story. When I was young, I had my one true love. Kingfish, I tell you, she was the sweetest gal that ever lived. So shy and gentle. But just before we got married, something happened. An awful blow struck. Fate struck a cruel blow. The angels took my sweet, shy, gentle creature to her eternal sleep. Oh, that's terrible, Calhoun. Uh, how did she die? She got killed shooting it out with the cop. <laughs> Well, boys, I just want you to walk with me as far as my house. I, I'm going to tell both of you that I as nervous as a kitten. Yeah, well, this is something, Kingfish, and I don't blame you. You about to come face to face with your old gal. Yeah, but to tell you the truth, Kingfish, uh, I don't know. Uh, I know you're nervous. I uh, wonder if you would tell me, though, that you feel like uh, that you... Well, you feel like uh, you used to about this one as Baxter? That you feel like you ought to marry her or something? Yes, I do, Emma. I'll probably have a crush on her for the rest of my life. But that's my hard luck, I guess. Say, Kingfish, I was just looking at you here. Look at that. You is really dressed up there, ain't you? Oh, yes, and uh, I guess a fellow always wants his old girlfriend to think he's a success and still the handsome chic that he was in the old days, you know. Nah. Well, here's my house, boys. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, boys. Thank you for walking with me. Yeah, well, good luck to you, Kingfish. Yeah, so, so long, long Kingfish. So long. Oh, well, I uh, guess I'll get on in here. Sapphire said Florence was coming about 7 o'clock. George, is that you? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, Sapphire. Uh, tell me, has uh, Florence got here yet? No, not yet. Oh, oh, she... I must say, you sound awful anxious to see her. Yeah, well, uh, it's only natural. <laughs> After all these years, you know, I... Uh, I feel a little nostalgia, bro, about the whole thing, you know. <laughs> yes, oh, she is really a sweet gal. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing her, too, George. It's been a long time. I hope the dinner's all right. I've been working awful hard on it. Yeah, well, now, don't worry too much about that, honey. Well, it's all we... Oh, that must be Florence now. You let her in, George. I'll go in and put on the steak. Yeah. Oh, me, how do I look here? Let me see. Well, I'll open the door. Be still, my pounding heart. <laughs> I was about to see an angel. Well, Florence, come in. Hold the mackerel if it ain't Egghead. <laughs> mm, uh, well, it sure been a long time, ain't it, Florence? Stand back and let me take a look at you. Well, I'm glad I got here before the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I has changed a little since the old days. A little? Them flopping ears of yours are bad enough but that head of yours. I've seen better hairdos on a coconut. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, Flores. Uh, you know, you has changed a little yourself, ain't you? Yeah, I've quieted down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 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 tell me one thing. Uh, uh, I want you uh, uh, sit down in the chair there, Flores. Yeah, I don't mind if I... I've been pounding the payments all day. Let me get my shoes off here. My bunions is killing me. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, Florence, uh, how have things uh, been with you? I hear that after you left Georgia, why, you was an actress on the stage there for a while. Yeah, I was, but I had to give it up. I fell off the runway one night in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Say, uh, where's that old sidekick, Sapphire? I always did like her. A little on the square side, but a good kid. Yeah, well, uh, I'll call her. She's in the kitchen. Oh, Sapphire. Oh, Florence, I'm so glad to see you. I was just inside getting supper ready. Sapphire, how are you, honey? 
Forget the supper, kid. Get your glad rags on and the three of us will go out and do the town. Let's go from cafe to cafe and we'll dance till daybreak. Yippee! Come on, Egghead. Get a move on you. Oh, me. I tell you, Sapphire... I never had such a terrible time as I had last night in all my life. I'm going to tell you something that that Florence really drove me crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, George. Say, George, you want me to get you another piece of toast? The piece you got looks like it might be burnt a little. Oh, don't give it a thought, honey. As long as you made the toast, why, it tastes good to me. <laughs> How's the eggs? Uh, the eggs, wonderful, honey, because I know you cooked them. George. You know, honey, I I can't tell you how happy I is that I is married to you. Well, that's a sweet thing to say, George. Sapphire, I, I got a little confession to make. For a while there, I, I thought uh, I'd be better off if I'd married Florence. But after seeing what she really was like, why, I knew I was wrong. I am so sure glad that that Aunt Mary sent her to... Money to come up here. Well, I got a little confession to make, too, George. I know that as soon as you seen her, you'd get over your crush. You did, huh? Yes, and I'm the Aunt Mary that sent her the money to come. Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Would you mind stepping over here a little closer, Amos and Andy? That's it. I want you to be sure and hear this. For tonight, the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall druggists have asked me to say thank you. Thank you for a season of grand entertainment. We've been proud and happy to sponsor you, and we'll certainly be on hand to welcome you when you return to the air for Rexall at this same time on this same network next fall. In the meantime, happy vacation. Well, folks, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for saying them kind words. And to you, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that this winds up another season which we have enjoyed and for which we are very grateful to you for listening. And don't forget, we'll be back in the fall for Rexall. And don't forget, too, even though we won't be on the, as a weekly reminder, during the summer months, we still hope that you'll remember to visit your Rexall druggist. Again, our deep appreciation to all of you listeners who make the Amos and Andy show possible. This is Freeman Gosden saying good night. And this is Charlie Carell saying, see you next fall. The Amos and Andy show is written by Joe Connolly, Bob Mosier, and Bob Ross. This is Ken Nile speaking. This program was transcribed. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.